Shalom and good day all. Good day all. This is Tehillim29 back again. Uh, as I'll now be doing a anime review of Akuma Kun episodes 5 and 6. First I'll cover the synopsis of episode 5 and 6 and what titles they're called. And then move into my written notes uh, discussing the episodes. And uh, finally finish off with my afterthoughts along with the rating of the series, or these episodes in the series. So for episode 5, it's called Angel. And it starts off saying, at, at his wit's end, a landlord breaks into the apartment of a tenant who stopped paying rent and discovers a gruesome, seemingly impossible murder. And for episode 6, it says, Love and Hate is the title. And after arriving in Easter Island to investigate a strange red nail, Akuma, Kun, and Mephisto discover the body of a murdered young woman. So jumping directly into the notes, uh, for episode 5, which is roughly 25, uh, roughly 23 to 24 minutes long and for episode 6 roughly 26 minutes long oh, episode 6 which is roughly 26 minutes long um starting the episode at a apartment villa the landlord tries to get his tenant to pay up only to come across a gruesome scene uh with the with some help uh, from one of the neighbors. Catching up with Ichiro and Mephisto, the third, they take the case and look into what could be a possible cursed doll on the scene, to which, uh, from which Ichiro pulls out a nail from the doll, to which he's distracted with the nail and sort of like wondering where it came from uh, we do learn that this is a demon nail and with this he tells Mephisto to basically to finish off the investigation of the murder um, or to look into the rest of the neighbors who live at the apartment whilst this is occurring and the case is solved with the villa murder. We then have Ichiro, aka the present day Okuma Kun, um, looking into investigating the nail that he found on the scene, to which we get to see him finally beginning to unlock the mystery behind the nail, and we meet a character by the name of Strophalia, which is like a type of fallen angel in this series. And we learn that he calls Ichiro Aishima. Um, forgive me for butchering that wrong, but it's spelled A-E-S-H-M-A. To which Shingo replies that he's not heard that name for a long time. So we know that this character is somehow connected to Ichiro, who is the present day Akuma Kun. We don't know how yet, but I must admit, with this episode, it actually did bring up my interest a little bit more with this character. Oh, one thing I forgot to point out with this episode is that uh, we do see Ichiro return to Shingo as he also looks for some more help and information in regards to the demon nail. And after that, we end up seeing something happen around the Millennium Kingdom and that there's a bit of history uh, somewhat connected to these two, but we don't know yet what it actually is. Jumping into episode six, um, a murder ends up taking place on an island and it's during that time that we learn that Ichiro and Mephisto III uh, have, with a little bit of help from Shingo, 
to go to the island a little bit earlier, uh, only to come across the murder scene a little bit earlier than the actual police in the story. We, of course, get the identification of the person who died in the story, and we learn that Shingo is once again somewhat distracted by the demon nail that's left at the scene. Uh, with the body identified, Mephisto III and Ichiro must work quickly to solve the case. Uh, along that, Grammary Glutton, who returns once again to help out, also makes things a little bit worse in regards to the scenario to which um, the person who was suspected for the murder of the person is now dead, and because of that, we learn that Mephisto shares with, or Mephisto III shares with Ichiro that he feels like the case isn't completely solved, to which we then get to see another scene of Ichiro talking to Shingo, his dad, or a, I guess adoptive dad or whatever else in the story, uh, discussing the events around what's happened on the island, and I really enjoyed that, and I will say because of that, or because of these present two episodes, it's actually helped bring the rating up quite a lot. Um, so as Shingo goes to investigate further after his talk of, Sh um, uh, uh, as Shingo, as Ichiro finishes off his talk of Shingo, he goes to investigate further as Mephisto III desired, ends up going to a scene to which Strafalia returns, and they have a bit of a conversation between them. Mephisto III, we learn, is in a bit of trouble until, of course, the case is somewhat finished off, and we see Strafalia in the background, sort of like towards the end of the story, waiting to play some more with Ichiro, who is the present-day Akumakun. Moving into my afterthoughts for 5 and 6, I must admit, I, I thought I was going to go in watching episode 5 and 6, and there'd be no changes for me to sort of like feel like I'd want to continue to follow the series. But I can say one good thing, they actually did something really good in these two episodes, which really brings me to want to be a little bit more invested in the characters. Uh, now, with Shingo, I'm fine with sort of like being invested in his character, but I was one of the things I was looking for that would sort of keep me holding on to doing these reviews is will they have Ichiro go a little bit more to Shingo just for a bit of help in the investigation. So basically, um, the son learning from his dad or adoptive dad to sort of like help solve the investigation. And we got to see that in, I guess, both of these episodes because it made me feel, okay, they are trying to somewhat... Um, make their relationship a little bit more solid, a little bit more better between them. And that's really good. I like that. But I'm also wondering a little bit more, how did um, Shingo come across Ichiro, who is the present-day Akumakun? We do know that there is a connection to demons, as it was sort of pointed out in an early episode. I believe it was episode two. And with that, we do learn that we don't know which demons they were that he was once under. We Another thing that I'd like to see return, though, is there was an investigation method that we saw with his character in the first two episodes. And I'm wondering if we're going to begin to see that again uh, with his character, because the way it sort of brought it across in his eyes it was like he was measuring points and and I want to see if that will return because that's one thing about his character 
Like, is it connected to a bit of ability that he learned when he was, like, before he was taken in? Or is it something that he learned after he was taken in by Shingo to be the fir- or the next Akumakun? So, th- this is just sort of like connecting the dots between Achiro, Shingo, uh, of course Mephisto the third, and also this new character that's turned up on the str- scene, Strafalia, and to which he calls him Aisham, or Aisham, I think it is, and I'm wondering what that's about too, why, is that his real name, or is that the name that he was uh, given as a form of servitude when he was under the demons, it's really got me hooked, so it's now time to move into the area of the rating. Now, I must admit, these last two episodes really have helped improve the rating for the main character in this series. Uh, Where before it was actually a 7.5, I'll say episode 5 brought it up to an 8. Episode 6 brought it up to an 8.5. I'm interested to see where this story is going. For the, now, that's just for the main characters, uh, being uh, Mephisto, and, or Mephisto III and Ichiro. The supporting characters, it's starting to get uh, so much more interesting that I want to see what is to happen next with the supporting characters in each of the episodes, whoever they might be. The next thing is the area of the animation, to which I give an 8 out of 10. Yes, we still get some scenes that sort of like feel like panels from manga, but sort of like drawn and coloured up, but that's alright. I understand what they're trying to do with the scene to to sort of like show some sense of stillness to some areas, to which other areas there's less stillness in the investigation next is the area of the soundtrack to which i give an 8.5 out of 10 i must admit this soundtrack is getting better and better as we continue through the story and last but not least the area of the story itself to which i give an 8.5 out of 10 Well, if you've watched these two episodes, what is it that stood out to you the most uh, that you enjoyed in this story? Until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.